Now the reason I'd even want to do server-side includes is because I frequently want to have the same information on multiple web pages and navigation is a great example of that. I want all of my web pages to have the exact same navigation menu. You could also use server-side includes if you wanted to have the same logo or banner at the top of every web page or if you want to have the same copyright information at the bottom of every web page and since your server-side include file is one independent file if you ever need to make a change to this then all web pages that reference that will update automatically. It's not terribly different than my external CSS file. Right now all three of my web pages are linking to the same style sheet. So there's my style sheet. If I chose to have a different background color as opposed to my current color, then all I need to do is refresh and now my pages will have that new color. Pages 1, 2, and 3 would have that. There we go. So for the same benefit that we use one CSS file to control multiple web pages, you can put one chunk of code. Now, it used to be that a framed website would be one of the more common fixes for this problem. But framed websites have a lot more problems than they do benefits, and using C uh, SSI or server-side includes will alleviate those problems. Now, in particular, I'll be using PHP to include some external files. So there's a couple steps to that, but they're all pretty easy. Now first I've got my HTML files and I want to have something consistent on all of them. Navigation. So I'm going to look at the navigation area just on one page. And while you're working you might even want to set it up on one page first. So in this navigation menu I would like to have a few hyperlinks. There we go. So now I've got my navigation menu. And if I look back over at my file on the browser this is how my navigation looks. Now I'm not completely happy with it, so I'll jump over to my CSS. There we go. So now I've got a nice colorful, colorful navigation menu. And if I'd like to put this same navigation menu on all of my web pages, whether I have three pages, 30 pages, or 300, my server site include will take care of that. Now, the first step to doing this is say, well, I've got the navigation menu that I like, and it's currently on my page one. Well, I'm going to cut that chunk of code out, and I'm going to go to my include file. Now, this is simply another file in my HTML editor. It can be done with any ASCII or HTML editing program, and I've saved it with a .inc extension. And I'll go ahead and save it again now that I've copied that in there. File, save as. And I'm calling it menu1.inc. And now it's been saved. INC is really just a generic extension to remind us that this chunk of code is going to be included on our other pages. Now I'm still going to modify my page one. Instead of having my navigation menu on my page one, I need to put in a reference code that tells the server to go grab my include code. So I'm going to put in There. This small chunk of code tells the server that I'm using a PHP, a PHP include in order to bring forth my menu1.inc file. My menu1.inc file is stored in the same folder as my HTML file, so all I had to do was reference the file. Now, for bigger projects where I have multiple includes, I generally create an include subfolder, and I usually call it INC. So in those situations, I would actually reference my include subfolder. And if you think you might be referencing from different websites, then you could actually put in an absolute URL in here. But since I'm referring to one file in the same folder, that's all I need. Now, this isn't going to solve the problem completely, but this is a good first step. I'm going to go ahead and save this, and then I'm going to jump over to my FTP application. Currently, my server is empty, so I'm going to take the files that I've created, my page one, my menu one, style sheet, page three, and page two, and I'm going to publish those. Now that those files are published, I could go to my browser and type in the URL. Now here's my page one, but I've got a problem. I can certainly see that my page one is loading, and here's the style for my navigation, but my navigation is not loading up. Well, my server doesn't know 
to look for the code because it doesn't know that there's PHP on this page. The server that I'm using through dreamhost.com requires us to give a clue that there's PHP on this page. And to do that, I'll save this page again, but this time I'm going to give it a PHTML extension. That lets the server know that this file contains some PHP code so that it can reference that information. Now that I've resaved this file, go back to my FTP program, I'm going to publish the new PHT PHTML file. I'm going to make a change on my web browser to reference the PHTML file. Now my navigation loads up. So, solution one to this problem is simply to use PHTML extensions. Now that can be kind of problematic though, especially if you're used to using HTML extensions. You could easily forget to make a hyperlink to the PHTML version of a file. So, the alternative is to use the htaccess file to tell the server that HTML files contain PHP code. Now you can manage your HT access file if your server is using the Apache server software. The server I'm using happens to be using Apache, so I can create a .ht access file, which once again is a simple plain text file, and I'm going to put in this line. This tells my server that .html or .htm files could potentially contain PHP scripts and therefore they should be referenced. I'm going to file save as, say this is .htaccess. Now I have a .htaccess file. So, I can go to my FTP program. Now I need to make sure my htaccess file publishes in ASCII mode, so I'm going to look at my transfer, transfer type, it's set to ASCII as opposed to auto or binary. I'll publish the .htaccess file. Now with my .htaccess file published to my server, I shouldn't need my PHTML file, so I'm going to delete that. So now I have page 1, page 2, page 3, and my .htaccess file, of course my include file with my navigation hyperlinks on it, and my style sheet. Let's see if it works. I'm going to take out the P in PHTML, reference just the HTML file. Now I'm looking at my HTML file, and my navigation is appearing. So it looks like it's going to be working for us. Now I'm going to jump back over to my source code. Page 1 has the proper PHP code inside, so I'll copy that. And I'm going to paste it onto my other HTML files. So now all three of my HTML files have the same chunk of PHP code, which is pulling my three navigation hyperlinks. Since I've made a couple changes, I'll go back to my FTP program, publish my two recently changed files, page two and page three. Now if I go back to my browser and reload, I should be able to go through my navigation. Page two has navigation. Page 3 has navigation, page 1, page 3, page 2, page 1, and on and on and on. Now here's the really great thing about this. Say some time has passed, and I would now like to add some more options to my navigation. I simply go to my include file, now that I've made those changes, I will republish my include file. And my navigation menus have all been updated on the various pages. They all now contain those same hyperlinks. So, this wasn't too tough of a process. You already know how to make a regular web page. So, now all you need to do is to be able to add the necessary chunk of PHP include Create your include files that have the standard code. If necessary, create a .ht access file which tells the server that PHP is going to be found on regular HTML files or HTM files and publish them all. Then it makes it a lot easier to manage consistent content on multiple web pages.